backup rehabilitation plan. My talk is going to raise some eyebrows as well as going to make you think a uh, few extra pointers. There are some pointers which I have accumulated through last 11, 12 years of my practice. And uh, now slowly we have started understanding that a anterior cruciate ligament tear is just just not an anterior cruciate ligament, just not a ligament tear inside the knee. There is a definitive neural connection. There is a neural disconnect which happens of that particular extremity and therefore there is atrophy of the proximal thigh as well as the calf. More and more research area is getting focused on getting the thigh girth and the calf girth and return to sport early after ACL reconstruction. Why? Because we need to remind ourselves again and again is that we are replacing a different tissue to a different position even if it is autographed. The mechanical properties are different. The basic microstructure is different. Okay. With that preface, I'll start it. So this is an inquiry of a real-time gait analysis. This was our research idea and no disclosures. So we are seeking some understanding in this when we are doing it. So this was uh, my talk which I presented uh, in South Korea. Why it's not playing? One of the GIF is playing. It's basically a GIF. Okay. There are multiple ways. It's okay. It's okay. So these are basically GIFs. There are multiple ways to approach reconstruction. These are the types of fixation which we have uh, repetitively, my previous speakers have said. The knee ligament tears are associated with high uh, thigh muscle atrophy and gait disturbances. What kind of gait disturbances? Most of the times the patient is sometimes unaware if it is an isolated ACL tear. ACL reconstruction along with meniscus surgery is one of the most common orthopedic procedures that we see day in day out. Surgical outcome is dependent on both reconstruction as well as rehabilitation. So what is the role? Gait analysis plays a crucial role in assessing and monitoring the recovery and progress of ACL tear patients. So we did an objective assessment, we gave them a quantitative feedback and we individualized the treatment plan and we monitored them for a long time. So how did we uh, monitor them? The objective measurement was we measured and analyzed various parameters of gait, the step length, the stride, the cadence and the joint angles. And identifying the abnormal movements, ACL tear often leads to alteration in movement patterns and compensatory strategies and movement imbalances. The imbalance and the movement disorder as uh, I mean if you have some more final discussion the way uh, yesterday evening when we were discussing Ayan Sarthak, the disturbances are so subtle that even the patient doesn't know him himself. And even after they have that slight shift in gait which unless and until they are made aware of they will keep on we need to wean them right back into their normal gait. So basically after a uh, isolated ACL tear there is a gait and neuromuscular asymmetry which happens which needs to be shifted back. It helps, basically why we need to assess the gait, it helps in us to determine the effectiveness of rehabilitation. After you have reconstructed, after you have done a wonderful anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction job, unless and until you know what was the defect in the gait before you went ahead with the surgery and how the patient is getting rehabilitated better, most of the times they will not complain because India we don't go into active NFL, we are not running around, we are not uh, doing rugby and sports. But some people who are clever, now that we are getting more and more educated class, we will get these patients who will complain, Nahi, there is some difference, there is some difference. So it helps us determine the effectiveness of a re rehabilitation protocol, how effective they are, and make the necessary ad adjustment real time. Because these patients, they will be coming back to you on a regular follow-up to optimize the recovery outcomes. So here was our problem statement, there is a lack of qualitative and quantitative biofeedback. Biofeedback means we need the patient doesn't know how they are walking, or is there any real defect or is there any real problem in the gait after a chronic or a uh, ACL, only isolated ACL tear of gait in recovery and post ligament reconstruction. So what we plan to do was to use real-time biofeedback gait analysis system in post ligament reconstruction. 
So the aim of the study was to use real-time biofeedback system to assist with rehabilitation of patients following knee ligament, uh, ligament reconstruction and to assess its use in post knee ligament reconstruction. So this was the method. So this was uh, where I was working my, in my previous institute. We had this gate lab which was used for neuromuscular patients where Parkinsonism and all those. So I uh, shifted them, asked them to make shift it for our ACL rehab patients. And these are the sensors, these are the bio wall sensors. Now uh, we have moved far ahead from these sensors. Now they, uh, the sensors, we don't need sensors now. And this is the pressure plate. So what we do is that these joint sensors, of course for, uh, uh, I mean, I mean to, for the display purposes, usually the patient is uh, uh, made to undress and the sensors are attached directly to the joints. Video. I think the video file is not here. So the patient, just video file is not here. So the patient is made to walk at least three times across the ramp and the entire gait pattern is recorded using two or three cameras. Two cameras on the entire ramp. And then we get output. Okay. In the output, we get as as I mentioned all the parameters when he puts his feet on the pressure plate we can calculate how much amount of weight he is bearing whether the weight distribution is equal on both lower limbs is there any excessive external rotation for which the anterior lateral ligament reconstruction play, comes into play and how much is the stride length what is the pattern is there any limb all those things get recorded what is his postural sway is his trunk swaying to one side so for this particular study, we only consider the weight bearing time on the legs during the gait cycle and the mean weight distribution when both feet were placed on the pressure plate. And the data was obtained before surgery and at 3, 6 and 12 months after surgery. And the data was then reviewed and tested using SSPS. So this is for demonstrative purposes. And this gives a, that's how we get our quantitative feedback. So these are the results. The mean distribution of the affected side was less as compared to the normal side in almost 75 to 100% of the patients. If you have got a chronic, acu uh, chronic isolated ACL tear patient, he has gait disturbance. Okay? And moreover, most of the senior faculty will agree that they have motor atrophy of the quadriceps and the calf. We keep on claiming that this is disuse atrophy, disuse atrophy, but why there is disuse, we really need to answer this question. And there is a fantastic study now getting published by Bernard Sonnery Cotet, where he has received his PhD in France. He is talking about arthrogenic muscle inhibition post ACL, uh, post ACL tear. So to further this study, there was a reduction in the mean weight bearing time and the mean weight bearing distribution on the affected side, which was statistically significant in all preoperative patients. After three months, 60% of the patient with biofeedback, biofeedback in the times when we made them aware that you are putting less weight, we put a mirror and we had them with a regular rehabilitation protocol. The normal, uh, as compared to the normal group two, after six months, group one showed normal weight distribution pattern and 70% of the patient in group two showed normal weight distribution pattern. But the difference between both them, the patients who received biofeedback and those who did not receive biofeedback, it nullified after 12 months. The point which I am trying to take it home is that patients who received gait analysis based biofeedback recover faster. The patient with ACL tear were putting less weight on the affected limb as compared to the opposite side. Biofeedback group showed faster rehabilitation in three months. Limitations are we have got a small sample size. Of course, in India, our patient compliance is an issue. So, un uh, certain another question which remains is why there is a difference in weight distribution and thigh girth. So this is the uh, literature, it's an online summary of his entire research, he has put it, it is in French, the subtitles are available, I uh, request you all to see this particular topic, it's very very inquisitive, there is huge talk which is going on right now, now people are coming with, with literature that orthogenic muscle inhibition takes almost 3 years, 3 years to recover completely, okay, and now people are doing functional MRI, post isolated ACL 
and trying to understand the amount of distribution, the weight distribution uh, in brain and neuronal, neuronal uh, replasticity or neuronal plasticity. So this is the future research, uh, research direction which I was quoting, orthogenic muscle inhibition after anti recruciate ligament, injured and uninjured limb and functional MRI, it almost takes three years. So what are the alternative for these expensive prime track and these things? So this is Kinect. Again, uh, the same word Jugaad, but what we have understood is that instead of the high cost of, uh, uh, the Kinect cost almost $200, and it has got the same accuracy as a icon. So we are working towards it. Thank you. Thanks a lot.